Welcome back. Uh, time to dive into the pages of the National Dailies. Look at the headlines uh, from the front page. And of course, we have uh, public affairs analyst Upunabo in Kutaria joining us this morning. Miss in Kutaria, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you, Kofi. Good morning. All right. Good morning, Nigeria. Okay, ma'am. Let's uh, begin with the headlines from the front page of the nation this morning. Buhari seeks APC governor's support to pick successor. Um, that meeting he had with them. Um, with them yesterday. Uh, the writer says, we want a candidate that can win. A governor's meetings on president's proposal deadlock. Okay, they had a meeting, some meetings on the president's proposal. Look at that as we go on. Um, Monkeypox, federal government bans sale of consumption of bushmeat. Members gave my abductors 100 million naira ransom, says Methodist prelate. Uh, this coming after uh, the Abia state government released a uh, a statement claiming that uh, the police or security agencies in Abia State had um, moved swift, swiftly to rescue the man. He's saying uh, nada, that didn't happen. Oye Tola condemns police shooting of the nation reporter. Really sad one. A trade attack. Terrorist demands taken to government. Uh, we have more from the paper. Buhari and his unfolding succession plans and an analysis piece by the nation newspaper. And national Working Committee members accuse party chair Adamo of taking on or unilateral decisions. Oshibajo, Lawan, Faimi Okorocha, others screen. EFCC, ICPC operatives to track vote buying in Ekiti poll. And Lagos Okada ban takes off. All right, uh, let's move on to the punch. Newspaper. It has the big one there. Presidency search for strong consensus candidate. Buhari directs APC governors search for strong consensus candidate. Buhari directs APC governors says a chosen one must be nationally acceptable, possess electoral value. President didn't disclose his favorite Nasrallah governor, and Akerdulu backs consensus. APC governors in strategic meeting as Oyegun Grills, Oshibajo, Lawan, Bello, others. Imo ex governor Okorocha gets bail, leaves EFCC custody. FG sends 640 soldiers on peacekeeping duties amid insecurity. We're helpless, abducted train passengers' family, families lament. And password stealing malware attacks rise by 100. And 46.65% in Nigeria. This, according to a report, uh, means we all have to be extra careful. Couple three children die. Lagos police suspect generator fumes. And 2,334 domestic violence cases in four months worsened. It's coming from the Lagos state uh, government. Lagos factory worker loses hand in industrial accident firm, blames victim. And agri-varsity's workers yet to receive wage arrears. It's coming from the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities. At the top of that front page, Lagos International Airport runway lights collapse. Pilots warn fan. Lagos International Airport runway lights collapse. Pilots warn fan. Page 21 has the details. Really uh, a puzzling one there. Buhari embarks on eighth foreign trip in five months. Uh, Okadaban begins today. Lagos deploys more boats. Kidnappers showed us decomposing bodies. Church paid 100 million naira ransom Methodist prelate. And uh, those are the headlines on the front page of The Punch. Let's quickly turn our attention to the Daily Independent that has the following headlines. Presidential primary APC governors settle for northern candidate. Focus on Ahmad Sani Yerima, Ahmad Lawan. Fear no southern candidate may beat Atiku. At the top of that front page, abducted Methodist prelate admits payment of 100 million naira before release. Telcos face declining investment over infrastructure vandalism theft. Crisis in APC as NWC members square up against party chairman. Security operatives are paid or raid IPOB ESN camp. Kill three in Eboy. PDP resumes governorship primary to accommodate Bauchi governor. Presents certificate of return to Atiku today. NUJ urges re redeployment of CP over shooting of journalist 
to others. It's talking about the Nation Reporter. Buhari unfolds credentials of APC presidential candidate. Appeals to governors that all interests must converge for victory. Leaves for Spain amid preparations for parties convention. And Aounda Ka, uh, Gemade, others want Benue, APC Guba, a Guba primary cancelled. Alleged 2.9 billion naira fraud court grants or Korcha 500 million naira bill. Of course, the man was able to sneak in at the last hour, hour for that APC uh, presidential screening. And finally, headlines on the front page of the leadership this morning. In final push for consensus, PMB says, I will choose my successor. I will choose my successor. It goes, this goes against what um, uh, the other papers said, you know, saying that uh, the, uh, the party was told, or the governors were told to choose a successor along with the president, and he never gave them a name. Uh, the writers to that headline asks progressive governors to support the anointed one. Party crisis deepens. Vice Chairman uh, Kekeme Lukman move against Adamu. Accuse him of rendering NWC members redundant, taking decisions unilaterally. Oshibajo, Lawan, Bello, Faimi, Ayade, uh, Onu, Jackrich, Okorcha, two others screened. Bochi PDP goes for fresh governorship primary as candidate step down, or steps down. A bank's credit to private sector hits 37.17 trillion naira in four months. And Hunter Scale, Boko Ram, Commander, Deputy in Borno State. I think the other headlines that have been covered by the uh, other newspapers. So we'll leave it at that and now turn our attention to analysis uh, courtesy I guess Opanabo and Kutaria. Uh, Opanabo, let's start with um, uh, the, the fallout of the President's meeting with um, uh, APC governors and the Chairman of the party. Uh, we'll be looking at that later today. So a very quick and short analysis from you. The line broke. The line broke. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm saying let's uh, okay. take a quick, uh, yeah, a quick look at the uh, uh, the president's meeting with the governors of the All Progressives Congress and the chairman of the party. Um, a very brief one from you. Well, um, the, the truth is, the meeting, as far as I'm concerned, was only to inform them of uh, his resolve to choose his own candidate. The man has made up his mind. Don't forget. Uh, in an interview with one of your sister stations, he has said his preferred candidate, candidate is close to his chest, and if he discloses the identity of that candidate, uh, he might be assassinated. And the president has just told the governors, what he said to them, I don't think it's even an appeal. I think it's more or less, more or less an instruction, just like what the River State Governor did when he chose his successor, when he said, uh, if they don't like his choice, then they should challenge it. And what the governors are doing is exactly what the president is doing. He has just told them, I'm going to choose my successor. Just like he did with the national chairman of the party, Adamu. So it wasn't more or less an information. It wasn't a question of uh, 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 confabulation. It's a matter of information. It, I, this is what I want, and this is what it's going to be. It's as simple as that. That was what happened. A lot of them might disagree. But also to protect their own political interests, they'll be silent, especially for the governors that have the second term to do. The ones without the second term will probably might protest, but the protest will be plastic. Why did they say plastic? Uh, what, what else would they do? You know, because of some political interests, their own political interests, the political interests of their godfathers, I don't really see uh, a protracted protest. At the end of the day, a lot of them will just submit. They will have to come to the government. The president's choice, and that is exactly what we have. All right, all right, all right. Let's uh, move on from that. Of course, as I said, we'll have an um, analysis of that later um, on the show. Um, the, the, the crisis in the APC National Working Committee is another one that the papers have uh, 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 dedicated some space to, or purported crisis, um, with the, uh, the Daily Independent saying that the members of the party are squaring up against the party chairman. Um, that's on the front page of the Daily Independent. If you look at um, other papers, for instance, um, uh, the Nation newspaper, uh, it says that the NWC members accuse the party chair, Adamu, of taking unilateral 
decisions. Um, we've seen in the past that some of these internal crises have been overblown and really didn't uh, lead to any uh, breakdown or any implosion in the party. If you remember what happened between um, uh, Maima Labuni and uh, his uh, deputy, the one who wanted to take over the party, I think it was a Niger state governor, uh, the party has moved on and nothing really went wrong. Uh, uh, nothing happened, there was no implosion. So is this something that goes along that line of being overblown or you think there's more to this and really this could lead to some serious problems in the party? Well, um, the Adamu has not been accused of being a dictator. Uh, some describe him as a strong character, strong will, some other semantics. But for the is it vice chairman Kekeme to have come out openly, probably it's an issue that they were able to resolve within the party. And uh, approaching the crunch time, he just felt we should let the world know, you know uh, what is going on in the party. The chairman of the party ought to be superintending over the affairs of the uh, party, the NWC and so on. But decisions are made collectively. You know, the NWC is supposed to be the body, the organ in that party that is supposed to make decisions for the party. And it's a collective thing, not a one-man show. But sadly, they have accused Adam of Running a one man show, you know, like I uh, taking decisions and all, all what not. So, if you talk of an implosion in the party, there is already an implosion in the party. We might not have seen the explosion, we might see it later, we might never see it. Uh, but there are so many ways of expressing your your vigor, your disapproval, especially in politics. Some might just try to play anti party, surreptitiously without you knowing that they're going to play anti party. Because you know, when every spirit revolts are tyrant, and when a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back to the double level. So, a lot of people might, in order to prove a point that you are dumb, you don't have the clout to think you have, you don't have the clout the president thinks you have, therefore, we are going to ensure that this candidate that you have posted on the party or your policies are identical to uh, the party's guidelines and uh, laws and uh, what have you, we are going to ensure that the party crashes. You know, it has a, a rippling effect, a dominant effect. So, uh, it all depends on how the president is going to manage it and address this speech. If it's not an explosion, of course, there, there's already a fissure on the political wall of uh, AP. But will the president be able to smash it? Will he be able to fill that gap? That is the issue. He has to be tactful in so doing. Yeah, you are talking of uh, human beings that have minds of their own. You are not talking to kids, you are not talking to babies. And let me let the Texas Nigerians know that normally when the president or the government is the twilight of the administration, especially when it's going to be his last tenure, there cannot be because the constitution says just two terms, you can't go beyond two terms. And most times when they are trying to round up their second term, you find out that the influence of the president or the government is whittled down. At that point, a lot of people believe that what is there. Man, I don't have to suffer, I will just suffer for maximum one year, and that's the end of it. And that is when a lot of people start challenging the status quo. And that is what my play of, because my people have said, when he was asked during the screening, if uh, he's going to accede to consensus candidate, and he said no, that he will refuse, he's going to refuse consensus candidate. How is he going to refuse it? He's going to defend to, to another political party. And whether we like it or not, yes, whether he's going to win the primaries or not, whether he's going to win the general elections or not, Tinubu is a force to be reckoned with, not just in APC, in Nigerian politics. So when you hear a man like Tinubu telling you that he's not going to accept consensus candidates, then you should know that it's a prescription for anarchy if the uh, party is not tactful in addressing most of this. All right. Um, the man, Rochester Korcha, was arraigned uh, before court. And uh, um, he was granted bail in five in, uh, to the tune of 500 million naira with surety uh, in like sum. Surety has to have um, landed property in, Abu in Abuja of not less than uh, 500 million naira. Um, yesterday, we're, we're, we're watching to see if he'll be able to perfect his bail conditions before the, uh, the end of the APC presidential uh, screening exercise at the Transcop Hilton Abuja. Uh, fortunately for him, uh, Rochas Okorcha perfected his bail terms and was released and let go and made it uh, just on time to the APC uh, presidential screening venue. What, what are your thoughts on that? It was some uh, mild drama when he arrived at the venue. 
Well, I must I must commend the ESCC. Uh, um, uh, uh, because it, to start with, you know, a lot of interpretation, slanted interpretation, were woven into the arrest of the Some duplicated the process, yes, no doubt. But then, if you go to the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, uh, the ESCC acted within its power, because within the bias of the ESCC. Of course, I don't bail. He was granted administrative, admitted to administrative bail. He don't bail, which was extremely responsible. So that he just felt, uh, given his status in the society, uh, he can just do anything and go away with it. He did So I love what the ESCC did. I must commend the ESCC for that. But a lot of who are just quarreling with the timing, because I think it was being uh, architectural to deny him uh, the screening and to a large uh, extent the right to contest. And in order to disprove those critics, the ESCC decided to release the function of bail and put it to bail again for him to go for the screening. In other words, all they are telling you is that there is no serial motive, there is no happening. The man, the man uh, 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 was found guilty, was accused, not found guilty, was accused, charged to court, granted bail of self recognition and even done the bail. Such a man, I must, sorry, I'm sorry to say, is irresponsible. What does it take? Who are you? Nobody's above the law. If you, are, if you are asked to appear in court on a particular day, why won't you appear in court? You see, we cannot continue to tolerate this act of impunity. And so I love what the ESCC did, and I must commend them that they also admitted it to bail for him to go for his screening, in order to prove to the world that, no, we are not acting at the behest of anybody. We are not doing this to deprive him of uh, 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 his right to contest for the presidency. We are only doing this because he done bail. And we have to prove that the ERCC is not to be tried for you. And that is what the ERCC did. So I'm very impressed with the ERCC. I compliment the chairman of the ERCC. Mm. All right, all right. Let's move over to the nation uh, newspaper. It uh, gives some attention to the fallout uh, from the PDP presidential primary where uh, Aminu Tambo, governor of Sakoto State, uh, publicly stepped aside in support of Atiko Walker, a move that uh, many believe uh, swayed uh, the delegates' votes in favor of Atiko Walker, thereby giving victory over Yeso Mike. Well, um, a man you know so well, Ijo leader, uh, Chief Edwin P Clark, has uh, come out, you know, scathingly criticizing um, uh, the PDP chairman, Dr. Yoche Ayu, uh, for calling Amiru Tambua a hero of the PDP. And that headline on the front page of the Nation newspaper, Clark demands Ayu's sack over Tambua, um, said that uh, the national chairman of the PDP, Dr. Iyocha Ayu, and Sakota State Governor Minu Tambua came under scathing criticism uh, from Ijo leader chief Edwin Clark, uh, the elder statesman, asked Ayu to step aside from office for describing Tambua as a hero of the PDP. Um, Clark berated Ayu and demanded his resignation for what he called, quote, undignified and parochial conduct. Your thoughts, Open Up Boinkotari. Well, um, for an umpire to publicly uh, comment Sangua and also the first name as a hero is a little bit suspect. It simply means his bias. But we're all human beings and we're all politicians. Uh, I mean, we're all close to human flows. So definitely you're going to have your biases whether you like a bias in favor or against the of that. But the truth about it is that you shouldn't have come out publicly as an umpire to have uh, commend or all respect. But one thing people should understand that this thing did not just happen. The whole thing was orchestrated. It was architecture to happen that way. And that is the unity we have in the north that we lack in the south. Now, even yes, of, even if Tango had not said that, I don't think yes, of Uke would have worked. Probably the gap, the uh, uh, that would have been reduced. The number would have been not that we would have worked. Now you are a governor at long ahead with all your southern brothers. You can see the unity in the north. This should teach us a lesson. You're a governor at long ahead with all your southern brothers. The Jose governor is not with you. Uh, Okoa is almost neutral. Uh, that, and you know, a, a lot of issues tend to play. It's Polycosa. We say ordinarily, I must tell you, just like Dr. Peter Odlu, ordinarily would have won this election. But in the morning, you are loquacious, you are at every point in time, you are attacking one person or the other, not just criticizing them, attacking their persons, their families, their parents, their wives, their children. 
They saw what happened to Farad and Bobo. Even the issue of donating money to state 600 million, 500 million, 200 million. Let me tell you, even those governments that are receiving the money will begin to wonder if this man becomes the president of this country, he's going to fix our church in Christ. Private prisoners are complaining. It's in the news, they're also here. You say, oh, no, you know, they believe that, ah, we are all going on. We will no longer have this immunity. Very soon we'll be stripped. Next is now we'll be stripped of our immunity. If we are stripped of our immunity, this man that is impervious to criticism, but is quick at criticizing others, I don't think he will be able to tolerate us. Because at that time, there is no more immunity. We'll be picked up and arrested, detained, and prosecuted at will. These are all the issues that they must have put into consideration in the plot against his success. That is the truth of Allah from first part. Otherwise, he would have won landslide. Landslide. But a lot of these governors would have said, ah, okay, look at what the appointment says, look at what look at what, look at what now, you, do, you, are, you are not getting the vote from the, your southern governors, the delegates. You don't have support from your home base. That is the south south. And you are killing the south out of the trade. What do you expect them to do? The North is also what? You know, you go and tell him, you say things. In church, you say, turn that fire in. And people will begin to ask, ah, ah, you are cronies, you are, you are uh, 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 lieutenant. My praise you, they might commend you, they might hail you. But my dear, this is your state. We are talking of national presidents. So they will begin. Is it presidential in nature? Okay, went to Casina. You are visiting the Casina State. Okay. The government came to the United States to visit the later man of Canada. Said I said this. Because he did not inform you. Oh, God of Israel, you said all kinds of things against me. But you went to Edo State. You did not inform the Edo State government. You went to Edo State. You went and knelt before the Bini monarch. Knelt before the Bini monarch. The Bini monarchy is not superior to the the, the Calabar monarchy or the Bonin monarchy or the uh, Okobo monarchy. You went and knelt before the Bini monarchy. But here you sit down and you hold your own things in context. Oh, if you don't walk out of here, if you don't come here, I'll do this. Oh, look at this small boy. He's the, today is the king. But well, he was a small boy running around. And you, these things are televised. You're talking about the Os Os Osman Danforio so incident. That is just the issue. That mm. was that, yes, he did. He did that what he did. And it was a master stroke. I commend his brief mansion. Because that is what you lack in the South. I will tell you something about that, uh, Kofi. Let me end on this story. I will tell you this, Kofi. If you go out there to say your father is an idiot, you don't expect others to respect your father. It is the respect you give to your father that will make others respect your father. That is the truth about it. Nigerians are what? And if this God knows that, like, is this the kind of person that will come and rule over us? Oh no, we're in trouble. That is what happened. Otherwise, with your ordinary would have worked, he did a perfect work in terms of campaigning, in terms of trying to win over delegates. He did well, just like Dr. Fitz Ogden. Ogden did was denied uh, participation because they knew that if that allowed Ogden to have one man's life. Because he did his own work very well. But a microcosmic view, for one reason or the other, which we don't need to solve that, worked against him. Even at the point of what you have sympathy. Okay, let him go for five to say no. Okay, Minister for Freedom, they said no. For one or two reasons. So you have to be clear that say, when you know that you have such a presidential ambition, you have to be circumspect in whatever you do. There must be some level of finance and deco in all you do. Because the world is watching. It's quite different from being a state of. All right. All right, all right. Interesting analysis uh, from you, Open Labo and Of course, you served as a, a, a special advisor to the governor um, in his first term, and you know quite well the workings of Government House with Hackett uh, as much as better than most people. Um, so you know what you're talking about. Let's move back to the punch in his paper. Um, Mr. President is flying. He's flying high again. Uh, the paper says Buhari embarks on its on eighth foreign trip in five months. Um, this time around, the president is on a two-day state visit to Madrid, the capital of Spain. Um, interesting one. This is on invitation 
uh, by his Spanish counterpart, Pedro, uh, Pedro Sanchez. Um, your thoughts on this? I'm sure the immediate reaction of, of, of the average Nigerian out there will be uh, again. <laughs> so, the, what do you say about this? Is that, is they should stop deceiving the world of the invitation. The president will just call his uh, colleague. The uh, colleague will say, Can I come? And the colleague will say, If you call him, will you know? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure? Open a boy could tell you. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? And the colleague will say, Okay, come. Then his uh, media aide will go on air to say, uh, on the invitation of, of, of the president of state. And then forget all of it. The man is just calling him. What has come out of all the jobs? The man is just enjoying his last minute. Oh, I'll well, soon be out of the Let me enjoy the paraphernalia of office, the press of office. That's what we're all after. He's always out of the country. So why should this even be used? He's always out of the country. He will come again and leave again. The next one now, the phone will invite him. The American um, 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 president will invite him. I don't know if he doesn't go there to sleep. We saw what happened the last. The phone will invite him. The American president will invite him. Very soon, the Togolese president will invite him. The Ghanaian president will invite him. He's always, if they don't, he will make a phone call to say, invite me, so that I can tell my people that I've been invited. He wants to leave. I don't know what, if he has issues with that so wrong. Or if he has this tension for flying. I, don't, I, I can't really comprehend it. Because I've not even seen the gains of the, most of these trips. What, 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 what impact has this on the economy? On, on security? But but open a, open a boy could tell. I mean, are you open a boy? You are like, you're claiming. Yeah, open a boy. You're claiming the president is the one who requests for these. Uh, I can I can um, hardly hear you. I can hear you. Oh my! Can, can you hear me okay. now? Okay. Yes, you're claiming the president is the one who um who requests for these trips. But it's quite clear that I mean, he, can he make the Spanish president invite him? I mean, this is um, going across or beyond the. Uh, the diplomatic red line if you want to tell the president of another country what to do. And I think that is against normal di diplomatic practice. Some would argue that I, I if the president can't tell the president of another country what to do. No, computer, computer, there is nothing. I don't know if you can hear me now. Let me put it. There is really nothing. There is nothing wrong in calling another president to say, can I visit your country? You could go there for political reasons, for economic reasons and so on. There is nothing wrong. The point I'm making, we are looking at the reasonableness in most of these things. What is the impact? That it, it has nothing to do with, it's not against any diplomatic uh, 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 norm. It's not. I mean, if you have to, if I can decide as a president to say I want to visit uh, uh, Ghana, I call the president, Ghanaian president, please can I call? And he might tell me, oh yes. <laughs> We have these economic issues to discuss. We have these issues, political issues, security issues. There is nothing wrong. What I am saying is this. What is the impact of these trips? What are the impacts? That is the point. Every time he is the most traveled president in the history of this country. And one of the most traveled in the history of the world. So what are the impacts? The effects? I mean, when, when presidents of Nabon Guterres... Yeah. And get back. There is an impact on the economy. Impact on the security of the nation, on the safety of the, on the continuous existence of the nation. What is the impact? That is what we are talking about. This is seven years now. What are the impacts? And most times, these truths are not necessary because there are things you could discuss over the phone. That's the point we are making. And you save the country billions of naira. Do you know what it takes for a person to fly out? You save the country billions. This is a country dead of financial resources. That is the point we are making. Hmm. That is the point we are making. All right, open up one, you know, in, in, in times past when presidents embark on these trips, they say they're going to look for foreign investors. Um, but anyway, you, you've made the point that um, it's too much uh, coming from this president. He's expected back in the country uh, on Friday, uh, days before the APC presidential primary, which holds on, uh, on June 6th to June 8th. But uh, if you remember, now, one of uh, his. Kofi, yes. Kofi, I bet you when he comes back, another one week or 10 days, he'll be out of the country. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, last. You one, just watch. One of the last you times, watch. One of the last times he traveled, it was when he was meant to meet with the APC uh, uh, governors to discuss the issue of the party's convention and, you know, the successor um, to Maimala Malabuni. And just before 
uh, there was this inter internal um, uh, confusion. You know, John Akpano Doyle again saying, so since uh, my beloved he was not around, he was meant to be there. The Niger State governor coming out to say, no, he has a letter, the man is no more, the, he's the new chairman and all that. That confusion. The governors were to meet with the president and he left the country and didn't meet with them. I don't know if this, this trip also is his style of saying, I don't want anyone to come and see me regarding the APC primary. I'll come back just before the primary so that no one will be inaccessible. Remember, Buni had to travel from Dubai to, I think, Paris, uh, where the president, or London, where the president was, to see him regarding the, the, uh, the internal crisis in the APC over its leadership. So do you think maybe the president is trying to be inaccessible for now uh, till the primary is is around the corner no i don't i don't think so i disagree uh mr president mr president is a memory he's made up his mind on an issue he's made up his mind on an issue he cannot be swayed the man knows who is going to succeed him that's the truth about it and he's going to beat it down the neck in fact i must commend him for not uh shooting his his, his, his thoughts you know, a lot of people will tell you, I will never impose the candidate on you, and at the end of the day, they impose the candidate on you, and they didn't dare you to challenge them. But this is the president that said, please, if the governors can do their program, allow me to choose my successor. If you don't like it, you will vote. If you submit your uh, protest, succeed, then you're fine. If it doesn't succeed, you're fine. But the matter that he came out to say that, I must commend him. Maybe his military background helps him. But I must commend I'm not the one that will come out with it. I don't want to impose the candidate. Meanwhile, they are doing that sort of decision to asking delegates to vote for a particular candidate and all kinds of shenanigans. But the man has said, allow me to do. So I must commend him for being very honest with Nigerians. Interesting one indeed, Upanabon Kutai. Well, the, the punch is if I give a, a, a rundown of the countries the president has visit, visited. He says that um, with this trip to Spain, you know, to Madrid, where he also meet the Spanish monarchy, um, the president would have visited eight countries in the past five months. That is quite a record. Uh, they say he had in May visited... No, no, thank, thank, God, thank God you admitted that it's quite a record. <laughs> in, in May, uh, the paper says he visited the United Arab Emirates where he paid a condolence visit to the country over the loss of its immediate uh, past leader. So the past leader, president died, and he went there to say uh, sorry to them. Um, also... They went there to say sorry. Yes. <laughs> Forgive my brother. No, but if condolence, you know. The president extend condolence messages. He went there to say sorry. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know the relationship between Nigeria and Dubai, you know, and the UAE. We have a lot of people go. Well, in that same May, uh, the president went to Equatorial Guinea where he attended the uh, Extraordinary Summit of the African Union. And he also went to Ivory Coast from there where he attended the 15th session of the country, Conference of Parties of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. Uh, Buhari also visited Brussels, Belgium in February, where he joined other world leaders for the 6th European-African uh, uh, Union Summit in Nairobi, Kenya in March. Uh, he was there for the 50th anniversary of the UN Environmental Program in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia the, in February for the 35th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of African Union Heads of State and Government and in London, UK in March for a two-week medical trip. Um, but some of these, these trips are really important international um, uh, commitments that he must fulfill. EU, UN, AU, UNEP. Including the condolence visit. Well, that's just one. <laughs> Including the condolence visit. All right. Anyway, open up, open up what we have. But, but there, there is this, there is this, uh, there is this, uh, what is that thing called the mine, mining, this, uh, uh, mining explosion in South Africa, Pussy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know how to describe it. I know that you know South Africa this flat mic and so on. Yes, 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 yes. So I, I, I just hope that they will soon go to South Africa to also it's uh, right. commiserate with, with, with the president of South Africa on that as well. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Open up going to tell you. I'm very surprised that uh, yeah. when Muhammad Ali died, it was okay, that was one. I mean, that was a good tool of your advice. When my manager, you would have gone to America to also. Well, so you uh, want you want to turn of, uh, you want to turn a president. I mean, it's also international politics. You want to turn a president into a condolence messenger. Uh, we refuse that. We refuse that. <laughs> thank you very, <laughs> thank, you very <laughs> thank you very much for your time, and I uh, hope to see you uh, sometime soon on the program. All right, Kofi. All right, thank you. Good morning. Good morning.
That's it enough for press. <laughs> we'll be right back with more. We delve into our first major conversation in a matter of minutes. Please stay with us.